Parkour and movement systems as a whole are super important when it comes to the video games that I love to play. Being able to add my own flair and personality and pizzazz is something that I find is really important when it comes to an open world game. Luckily, there is a game on the horizon that is looking to fulfil that quota, and that game is Rooftops and Alleys. Rooftops and Alleys is being created by one solo developer, which is crazy. His name is Michael, by the way, and he's always had a burning passion and interest for movement systems in video games. So for Rooftops and Alleys, he's taking inspiration from many games that he has played during his childhood, which stems from classics such as Jet Set Radio Future and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and even to Assassin's Creed, which arguably popularised the parkour genre in modern gaming, but as well as taking influence from more modern titles such as Mirror's Edge and even Dying Light. The trick system that has been implemented into rooftops and alleys is very much akin to something you'd see in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, where the more tricks you do in a line, the more points you will gain for that specific run. And it's actually often a big reason why I come back to play the Pro Skater remasters, because I want to get a bigger and better combo and do it in the flashiest of style. The beautiful thing is that this type of system is seen in sports games all across the genre, from Steep and Riders Republic, and even to Marvel's Spider-Man series of all things. And so it's a very nice way to keep the audience wanting to get better to fulfil that itch of getting a higher score through a big open world environment. And speaking of environments, the maps look nice and large, giving us a lot of room to try out new routes and pathways as we get to explore the open worlds. In a game like Mirror's Edge, for example, there is always, always a red line guiding you where to go, limiting the feeling of exploration to a few repetitive pathways that you go through a thousand times, and ultimately, when I was playing it, I got bored of the experience before even finishing it, and just kind of finished it out of pity. Luckily, there are going to be multiple maps for the game. Uh, I'm not too sure specifically how many, but it has been said that there are more than just one map. In Michael's most recent dev update, he noted that the feel of Skate 3 is something that he really wanted to hone in on for rooftops and alleys. That sense of whimsicality and not taking itself too seriously like other sports simulators do. And it's all about finding that healthy balance between functionality and fun that made the series like Skate so beloved by critics and fans alike, and that's really something that he wants to replicate with Rooftops and Alleys. Keeping on the topic of Skate, we all know that the next Skate game has been in development for some time now, and if you've seen at least one trailer, then you will know that Skate will also have parkour implemented into its movement system. And you might be thinking, if Rooftops and Alleys is trying to be Skate with parkour, then I might as well just wait for Skate. And yes, you could say that, but you, my friend, would be robbing yourself of something amazing. I highly doubt that Skate's parkour system is going to be nearly as in-depth and thought out as what's been done for rooftops and alleys, with combo tricks and point systems. To be quite honest, I think Skate's parkour system is going to be rather shallow and bare-bones in comparison, just a skeletal frame that allows you to climb up a wall with little flair and pizzazz, and it's just really a flashy way of getting from A to B. The fluidity of rooftops and alleys in my eyes is going to be very similar to Marvel's Spider-Man series. The gameplay that we have been teased is just so buttery smooth and clean, which is the most important part of the experience. And in case you're a little bit confused why I mentioned a superhero game when I'm talking about a parkour game, let me just delve into it a little tiny bit. What I mean by it reminds me of Spider-Man is purely the care and effort that it takes to make a game solely based on movement alone so fun and replayable, something I believe that Rooftops and Alleys is doing a great job at, as the movement system looks to be both as punishing as it is rewarding. If you clip your foot on a wall, your run is over. Learning to precision jump and not fall off a building is important. If you don't learn, then you won't be the best. Now, saying that on the opposite side of it, if you're in a good flow and doing great tricks, then you'll be rewarded with a slight speed boost. Don't get me wrong, the movement system in rooftops and alleys 
will be a double-edged sword, and something that you will really have to learn. First and third person cameras are also available in the game, which is always great for people who really want to get invested in the movement as if it's really them doing the tricks. However, I will be playing this game in third person, as the first person view is real first person. And what I mean by this is to put it simply, when you do a backflip, so does the camera. It doesn't stay focused forward like other games do when you do a cool trick, for example. You will do a flip as if you are physically doing a flip yourself. And I have a big feeling that I'm going to get a bit motion sick, so I'm sticking to third person. So far, Rooftops and Alleys has amassed a reasonably big following of fans for such a small developer this being his first game on Steam to my knowledge. Me personally, I've been following this game on an Instagram page for a good couple of months now, and I've always really wanted to talk about it, so that's what I'm doing today. There has been so much overwhelming support for this title. Everyone who has seen the smallest little bit of gameplay has fallen in love with it and have wanted to play it. And you want to know why? Because it's different. It's not a shooter with parkour elements, it's not a story game with parkour elements, it's not a survival game with parkour elements, it is solely and simply a parkour game. And for me, it's one of the main drawing factors for why I want to play it. It doesn't have a big story or side quests which push the dev time away from the movement system. It's simply a game to leap into and do some cool tricks. It's nothing heavy, like most AAA games are now, so it's looking to be more of a digestible approach to even the most casual of gamers. I will however mention that there are time trials for levels, but I wouldn't say that detracts from the experience, but instead helps the player get to grips with its mechanics. And let's just be real for a moment, this is definitely the type of game that you wished you had on your phone as a kid, especially when parkour games were all the rage on the App Store, this would have been perfect, but obviously it's not possible on like an iPhone 4 when they came out. I personally have recently started playing more titles by indie developers. I find their games to have so much more passion and care poured into them. Rooftops and Alleys really reminds me of the PS2 era, a time when developers were making something with thought and nurturing that idea to create a game with so much personality and character compared to today where most titles, to be honest, as bad as it sounds, are just cookie cutter experiences with no flavour. Now let me tell you, I am very jealous that I don't have a PC to play it, but Michael has mentioned console ports in the future, so that is very promising. I personally would really love this game on my Switch to play on the go. I'm just saying, Michael. I'm just saying. Rooftops and Alleys is said to be released at some point in 2024, as no actual release date has been given out as of yet, just the window of the year 2024. It's almost like the developer wants to make sure he has a polished game that he can be proud of, rather than one that he can just patch later down the line. I'm personally super excited for Rooftops and Alleys to drop, although I won't be able to play it when it releases because I don't have a PC, but I will be looking out for the console ports of the game, so fingers crossed that they do release. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.